Intimate partner violence, IPV, is most commonly understood as a women's issue, occurring in heterosexual couples. However, there is now increasing awareness that in fact, anyone can be a victim of IPV regardless of his or her gender or sexual orientation. According to Statistics Canada, in 2005, 7% of Canadian women were exposed to either physical or sexual abuse by their current or previous intimate partners. Similarly, 6% of Canadian men were victims of an IPV. This points to the importance of gender symmetry in positioning men and women as both potential perpetrators and victims of IPV. With this in mind, we were keen to understand experiences of IPV among gay male couples, particularly the connections between IPV and masculinities in the context of homosexual relationships. This article, Gay Men and Intimate Partner Violence, shares excerpts from our conversations with 14 gay men who experienced partner violence in their same-sex relationship. Throughout these conversations, they speak about their personal challenges, ways of overcoming the situation, and strategies to mend themselves. In their interviews, men described how important it is, as a first step, to recognize that intimate partner violence was occurring in their relationship. In responding to recognizing IPV, participants detailed three processes to map their actions. These processes did not necessarily happen in a particular order, and they are not mutually exclusive pathways. Rather, the processes illustrate contextual complexities arising from men's experiences of IPV. Participants suggested that admitting to some or all of emotional, physical, and sexual abuse inflicted by their partner was a critical first step because most often men tend to normalize or conceal the violence. From here, the men move towards realizing a way out. While they often initially wavered and hesitated, leaving the relationship ultimately emerged as the only way out of the abuse. Finally, the men focused on taking care of themselves, in other words, nurturing their recovery. They did this by employing a range of self-management and support strategies. In terms of masculinities and men's health research, our conversations both reveal the need for support services in male victims of intimate partner violence, as well as offer advances for how we might thoughtfully apply masculinities theory to gay men's health issues. For more information on our study, we invite you to read our findings.